For all the refrigeration components, the first one we're going to start with is the evaporator. And we'll go over a few of the characteristics of the evaporator and then we'll go through a little more detailed uh, description of what happens inside of the evaporator. So this is where the heat is exchanged from the room into the refrigerant. And remember, again, with refrigerant, we're, we're removing heat from the air. We're not cooling the air. It, it, we're cooling the air, but that is a byproduct of uh, removing the heat from the air. Now, there's two sides to an air conditioning system, the high and the low pressure side, and the evaporator is located on the low pressure side of the system. Now, the evaporator typically is going to operate at 38 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. That's, good. That's the saturation temperature of the refrigerant in the evaporator. The air being blown over, it's going to usually be about 75 degrees or so, and then the air leaving the evaporator is going to be about 20 degrees lower than the air entering. So for example, if there's a 75 degree air entering the evaporator and the evaporator coil is at 40 degrees, it's going to be about a 55 degree air leaving the evaporator. And as we learned from module one, module two, and this one, uh, the refrigerant absorbs the heat by boiling at a very low temperature. And remember that change of state, which is boiling, is what consumes tons of heat energy. And that's how we're able to, to remove it from the air so, so efficiently in air conditioning. Now, when the refrigerant enters the evaporator, it does so through the metering device. And we're going to start right at that point. Because this is a cycle, there is no real good place to start. So you have to start somewhere. And we're going to end right back up at the um, metering device. But when it enters the evaporator from the metering device, it flashes pretty quickly to a 75-25 mix. And this is saturated refrigerant, which means if we add heat, which we're doing in the evaporator, it's going to cause it to change state. And that is that is what happens through most of the um, evaporator. Now, near the end of the evaporator, the vapor becomes uh, superheated and it rises above the saturation temperature. And the reason we have superheat is to make sure that we have no liquid refrigerant that goes back to the compressor because that's what damages um, valve plates and uh, burns up compressors. So, and we'll go through this in great detail because this is what you need to do to charge and to check the system charge. Uh, one of the measurements is superheat and it is equal, superheat is equal to the evaporator outlet temperature minus the evaporator saturation temperature. And and we're going to do a video on this specifically. So just, just remember the definition. And then most air conditioning systems ha will have the design superheat in the operation and maintenance manual if you can find it. But a good rule of thumb is between 8 and 12 degrees Fahrenheit of superheat. And the one thing that that a lot of that trips up a lot of the uh, newer HVAC techs is they start looking at the the pressure temperature chart, which is a saturated uh, state of the refrigerant. Superheated vapor does not follow the pressure temperature relationship that you find um, in your text on the uh, pressure temperature chart. So here's what an evaporator looks like. The refrigerant enters from the compressor through this pipe right here. This happens to be a TXV metering device, which we will go over to, we will go over in great detail. Um, it drops the pressure at this point and it en enters the distributor and the distributors feed that refrigerant through the evaporator coil. So it flows back and forth through here through different, several different routes, exits right here, and it comes right back out on the low pressure side of the system. Okay, let's take a look at this. This is the metering device right here, and it just shows that it's a it it's a restriction. It doesn't give it in detail, so you just need to trust that that's it. We'll come back to that when we come to another video, and that is the 
this point right here on the evaporator. So what we're going to be examining is from this point through the coil and then back out to this point. Okay, let's get started here. So if you have your pressure temperature chart out, you will be able to verify with an R22 system, which this is up here, at 69 degrees PSI G on the gauge, that the refrigerant temperature is 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you were able to put a thermometer on, on this pipe while everything was running properly, you would be able to measure uh, 40 degrees Fahrenheit on the pipe right here. So at this point, when it enters the evaporator, the, the, the we're on the PT chart, we're at saturated temperature, and we're at 25% vapor and 75% liquid at this point. Now remember, as long as this refrigerant is boiling off, it's going to, uh, any heat that's added to it from the room air is going to cause a change of state, but not a change of temperature. So here we have 75 degree Fahrenheit room air being blown across the evaporator coil. And this refrigerant is flowing through here, boiling, 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 and absorbing heat as it, as it changes state. And remember that change of state it takes a tremendous amount of heat energy, so it's sucking up a ton of heat here, just like a sponge. And about theoretically halfway through the coil, um, we're still at 40 degrees. We're still at 69 psig, and we're now 50-50 liquid and vapor. Again, it's because we have liquid and vapor together, we are still in the saturated state. So we will continue to boil, boil, boil all the way through this coil absorbing heat along the way and this coil is designed so that at just about the last 15 percent of the coil all of the refrigerant is now boiled off and it's 100 percent vapor and at a spe specific point it's still at 40 degrees and 69 psig but here's where we drop off the pressure temperature chart the refrigerant at this point is now all vapor. It can't boil off anymore. The only thing it can do is heat up. At this point, any additional heat that is added to the vapor becomes sensible heat and it will, as it travels through the last part of the evaporator coil and gets starts to exit the evaporator coil, let's take a look. So it starts to exit the evaporator coil at this point right here all the refrigerant has been boiled off and the only thing this vapor can do is it's it's at 40 degrees at this point and all it can do as the 75 degree air passes across it is to start to warm up and this is where the superheat comes in and, and it makes sure that we have boiled off all of the liquid refrigerant and and at the exit point of an evaporator that's working properly we now have 69 psig but 50 degrees fahrenheit and the difference between the saturation temperature of 40 that we see here throughout this throughout the uh, evaporator coil and the temperature as it exits the evaporator coil is the superheat and that superheated vapor is sensible heat and it makes sure that the compressor doesn't have any liquid uh, flooding back to it and once again, remember, once we hit this point of superheating from here to here, the pressure temperature chart has no bearing whatsoever on what you're doing. And even though it is still 69 PSIG, we have fallen off that uh, pressure temperature chart and we're now in the sensible heat portion of the uh, refrigeration cycle. So that's it in a nutshell. This is key for you to understand. If you don't get it, watch this video over and over. If you are still having issues, uh, shoot me an email or actually put it on the forum and we'll answer that on the forum and discuss it there. And then uh, check the calendar because we do have a module one, two, and three review where we'll go over this again and again until you get it and, and truly understand it. So that's it, break time. Next, next thing we'll talk about is the compressor and we'll work our way all the way.
the way through each refrigeration component.